Inez, New York State expects to have legal cannabis sales for the general public by the end of the year. But first, they do want to make sure people know how to use marijuana safely. So the use does not become a danger to the public. So the state's new Office of Cannabis Management has released a public information campaign to do just that. Joining us right now, the Executive Director of the Office of Cannabis Management, Chris Alexander. Nice to have you on Good Day New York. Thanks for having me. So uh, your background is that you've been an advocate for this for quite some time. Absolutely. Uh, for, for many years working to advance the issue, but also to break through some of the stigma related to cannabis. And I think that this campaign really is going to do a, a lot of that work for us uh, that we've been trying to do for many so, Chris, let me understand this. It's not legal yet because I see a lot of stores that have opened up all around New York, some in my area, where they're selling stuff onto the counter. <laughs> yeah, Why do you know this, Rosanna? <laughs> because I'm, like, doing surveillance now in every store in my neighborhood. We, we are I aware. I can't believe it. <laughs> we are aware and very concerned about uh, folks who, who jump the gun. A bit. So uh, they jumped the gun. They've jumped the gun. They're not supposed to do not that. Not supposed. But they're to. not going to get in trouble right now. It doesn't seem like. Well, we've already sent out cease and desist letters uh, oh. to those businesses that we have identified, uh, mm. giving them an opportunity to get into compliance to stop selling product that's not been tested. Uh, and really, that's our big concern: making sure that the public has access to a regulated and tested product. And these uh, businesses are violating that, and, and we're really concerned about them. So we're, we'll, we'll be working to. Uh, remove those operations. I got it. So once these stores are legally able to sell, whether you call it a hash, herb, skunk, baby bang, broccoli, roach, <laughs> Donna How do Juana. you know all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't put this back on me. But whatever you call it, you have some basic ground rules, 21 and over, and then you're asking people to, if they, if they s smoke skunky smelling weed, to smoke it away from other people. Now, I mean, this just may be a question because I'm not a weed connoisseur, mm -hmm. but I mean, I feel like any joint or doobie, as some people refer to them, th it smells all the same. Cannabis is known for its odor, yeah. but there are other mo multiple forms of intake. So there are you know, edibles, you know, gummies, other types of intake that folks can utilize yeah. that doesn't have the odor. So we, we focus on smoking, particularly in this public education campaign, just because we know that one, it can be a nuisance, mm -hmm. and two, it could have an impact on, on others around you. So I want to emphasize uh, at the onset that if you're going to smoke cannabis, you should do it away from others. Gotcha. And now that you're, you know, in the process of legalizing this in the form that people just go into a store and buy it uh, at the end of the year, what about people just growing their own weed? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be allowed uh, at, at some point soon. Um, okay. Right now, the medical the rules for the medical program, for patients in the medical program who are interested in growing at home, mm -hmm. those have been uh, put out for comment. Uh, we are about to uh, respond to the comments that folks have made, you know, asking for some clarity on the rules. And then once those rules are finalized, folks will be able to grow at home. Those you know, are, that will be just for the medical patients. Got though. you. But for, you know, everyone else regularly, you know, who has a windowsill, yeah. maybe <laughs> you a rooftop. You got to wait a little bit. Uh, a little <clears> bit. <throat> got you. Don't look at me. I'm just asking <laughs> for the right. people. <laughs> there are some new rules. In fact, your office put out um, uh, a little ad. So we have a clip. Let's take a look. New York State has legalized cannabis, and to help understand what that means, we are starting the cannabis conversation. Who can use, where to use, and how to safely use. You must be at least 21 to legally use, possess, or buy cannabis in New York. If you choose to smoke cannabis, do it away from other people. Cannabis should always be stored out of reach of children, and you should never drive under the influence. Join the cannabis conversation at cannabis.ny.gov. All right, so good information in that ad. Um, what about driving high? I mean, that's a problem. As you know, other places that have already uh, legalized cannabis, like in California and Denver, mm. they, they're having a problem with trying to figure out you know, how high these people are behind the wheel. Absolutely. So one, you know, the, these initial messages do focus on road safety and making sure that folks understand that it was illegal to drive under the influence yesterday. It is illegal to drive under the influence of cannabis today. And so we'll have billboards, as you can see, uh, posted up across the state, reminding folks not to drive under the influence. If you feel different, you'll drive different. But we've also dedicated significant resources to law enforcement across the state to give them some more tools that they need uh, to keep our roads safe. So let me ask you something. When you go into these legal dispensaries at some point mm -hmm. in New York, they're going to be taxed. Yep. It's going to cost a lot of money. What do you think the black market's going to be? And w what is the difference? Why should we buy from a legalized mm -hmm. dispensary when we can probably go to the corner on the par by the park? That's what we did when we were younger. Um, <laughs> by the park. 
<laughs> and you buy it, and I mean, what's the difference? Well, we've seen across markets, you know, we're not the first state to do this, right? So we've seen across yeah. markets, there are a couple of different variables that you can, you know, tinker with to reduce the use of the illicit market. Some of it is cost, some of it's product availability and choices, some of it's accessibility. Some of it is even just the fact that I was emphasizing earlier that folks want tested and safe products that don't have contaminants or pesticides in them. Right, and you so, don't know what's in them, right? Yeah, yeah, and so we think that legalization actually is one of the best tools, and regulation is one of the best tools to take folks away from the illicit market and put them into the regulated market. Can I just ask one last quick question? I know sure you can. said we're not the uh, first state to do this. When I lived in Oregon, this is when they legalized it. Because it wasn't federally regulated, the influx of money coming in, some of the banks wouldn't touch it. Yeah. What's the situation with that here? Yeah, I mean, so same issues still apply. Uh, there are some challenges with, with uh, federal banks, but state chartered banks, you know, have been given cover to do business with these cannabis businesses. And so, you know, we're encouraging those institutions to make sure that our entrepreneurs in the space have all the support that they need. So if people want to find out more information, where can they go? They must go to cannabis.ny.gov. We've got tons of fact sheets, resources for parents talking to their young people in their lives uh, and for folks just interested in learning more about the impacts of cannabis on on everybody. Gotcha. Do you smoke? <laughs> <laughs> she put him on the spot. Oh, boy. I'm, we get the head of the cannabis department. <laughs> He's like, I am. I plead the fifth. I mean, like, if you ask me about news, I would say I know everything know about news. everything. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, look, there's definitely some research that needed to be, nah. There I, you I, go. I, 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 <laughs> not, not, my, not my voice of choice, yeah. All right, anyway, there you have it, the Executive Director of the Office of Cannabis Management, Chris Alexander. Always great to have you on Good Day News. Thank yes. you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it.